everyone we are back on the mazda it's about 20 some days till race week and like clyde that's usually when we work on it's when it's in a hurry to get it done for something so so alex is helping me get the dry shaft out of clyde we are actually going to get the rear gears out i already have new gears sitting here under all this stuff uh but there's some new gears sitting there so we are going to go ahead and get the dry shaft out rear center section out and take it in so i can have the new gears put in and then move on to the injectors on here but today we're just going to try to tear this thing down so then we can go ahead and start working on getting the new gears in it because if you guys remember right they were whining something fierce uh it is pretty dirty because it's puking a bunch of stuff out and then also on race week if you guys remember we lost brakes so here's my little race week patch and it's been on here for an entire year i put a little bump stuff up there it's a little uh rubber piece but i plan on moving this over and probably putting the t here uh, where it comes up off of there come over to t here fix these lines maybe go to a soft line here anyway um so then it's protected if it's here it can't hit anything up there it's just not a good spot what it was doing is when the car was loaded down with everything it's coming up and hitting right here i have clearanced it some but uh i just prefer not to mess with it so i'll probably take this guy off it's been on there for an entire year but see i bought some of these pads while on race week and ran it that way but now yeah, you can see the shiny spot from this angle <laughs> yeah so you guys can see right up here is where it was hitting here and here and everything so what it was doing is the body right here was coming down and rubbing on this fitting and it loosened it up and then when i went to hit the brakes it squirted fluid out right here and lost brakes so i want to cut this little tab off move it over to a safer spot and then the brakes will be good so i want to just go ahead and get some stuff freshened up on clyde before race week also this year i'd like to take a little trailer so we're not weighing the car down so bad uh, worst case scenario, take the bag again, but I think I can make a pretty easy little trailer hitch. Come off of here, go over there, put two bolts in it, and then have it come out with a little trailer mount uh, right right there. So I think that'll work. We'll find out for sure, but otherwise it's time to get back on Clyde so we can get ready for race week. So now the drive shaft is out. Just going to let it hang there, uh, and then we'll come in here and loosen all these. But before we do, we're going to go ahead and get the wheels off of this thing. Uh, brakes off, slide the axles out, and then we can move into popping the center section out of this thing. They do slide, but it's one of those deals where it's oh, yeah, you get it. on the tough side. All right, guys. All right, so here we go. We got the wheels off, brakes off, just having them hang right there, getting this assembly out, and then we can slide the axles out of the 9-inch, do the same to the other side, and then center section time. About 10 minutes later, and now this axle's out, so we just pop them out enough to where it comes out of the center section, so I come out, you don't have to pull these out all the way, just enough to do that. We uh, just took a little hammer, mallet, and something to hit it against. Chose the back of the stud, popped it right out. We're going to go ahead and pop it out, get it put in this tray to take to the shop, but I'm curious to see when we get this out what the gears look like on it since they were making all them horrendous noises. Well, there we go. This is out. You guys can kind of see I wiped off a few teeth. There's a little bit of a, a groove. I don't know if you guys can see that very well or not, but... There is a little bit of a groove right here. You can feel a little lip back in the deep part of it. But otherwise, that section is out. We'll grab the new gears and drop them off to our buddy Rick. He'll knock these out for us and then we get this thing sat back in there. So otherwise, it's looking looking a little thin up in here. Axles have most of the way out. They're looking plenty good because this thing doesn't make all that much power. Uh, yeah, so... Go ahead and take care of a few little things while it's apart. Clean it up. Clean up this axle tubing because it is disgusting. I need to like plug this off somewhere. It's a little vent up here, so it's just venting the atmosphere, which coated everything back here. But what's that? How's my coating job holding up on the inside of the axle? The inside coating job is fantastic, other than where I melted it with the welder. <laughs> so. Damn, you ruined it. I know. What's up with that? But otherwise, man, it's. But this being an axle house and it was just hanging out in a hanging out outside for a few years it's done pretty good so gonna go ahead and take care of that and then we also have our little list over here figured out gears got them out just need to get them fixed and reinstalled uh brakes fixing those back brake lines to clearance them for safety getting the di injectors out and fixed i ended up getting the tool already for that so some of this uh, seal fire will also try to keep as much water coming in it as we can because there still won't be a hood on it Window seals. I have some cheap stuff that I'm going to try. I don't I don't have much faith in it, but we'll find out Trans cooler. Uh, I never hooked up the actual little cooler 
uh, inline cooler line and power to it. The trans cooler's there, but the fan doesn't work. So it still had a cooler on it, just no cooler fan. And then the cross brace, uh, I need to get a cross brace reinstalled on this thing because uh, we cut the factory one out and then I mounted the radiator. But as you guys can see, it's starting to bend the radiator as the chassis moves around. So a handful of things to do up here. And then also, I'd like to try to find a bushing for the steering wheel. I'd love to get shocks up here too. I just don't know if it'll happen because those are extremely hard to figure out and find. I might actually have to like cut the little top of the strut. Uh, and that's a modification that they do on these RX2s. And then you can run like an RX7 uh, adjustable coil over up front too. So a few different things to go on the Mazda. But otherwise, gears are out. Get them sent off and we'll get these things reinstalled. So now that that is out, we got a little bit more time today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on getting the intake off and possibly popping the injector. Uh, it's this passenger bank of injectors we need to get out. So I'll get the car lowered down and we'll go ahead and start working on that. So it's about 50-50 on people walking up to this and thinking, is it an LS or what is that? So that's the two most popular questions I get. Like, what engine is that? Or like, what intake? Or like, people just aren't quite sure it's an LS. And quick telltale is that there's no injector rails and injectors up here because it's DI. So the injectors are actually sitting under the intake. Uh, there's a little hard line rail you can see there. So extremely quick and easy. It literally takes like five minutes to rip this intake off here. It's a few bolts, especially on this car. The intake tube can even come with it and all that crap. So unplug a few things uh, and we'll get this intake off. But getting the injectors out is sometimes a huge pain. If you guys watch back when we did the injectors the first time, uh, had a big issue with it, but I bought the little compression tool now for the Teflon seal so I can redo all the seals on this bank. As you can hear it. So this bank's been good, but that bank originally when I got the engine had a bad injector in that side. Um, so we replaced it once, worked for a little bit, but then it ended up pushing that seal out and it just sounds terrible. So we're going to go ahead and get that all sealed back up. So once that's sealed up, new rear end gears aren't making noise. Man, this thing might, might drive and feel like a whole new vehicle. So that quick intake's off and boom there it is so here's the hard lines they recommend you um swap these to new ones which i already reused them once i'll probably go ahead and put new ones i bought them before so uh, but here's the fuel system you haven't seen inside a gen 5 lt comes up mechanical pump uh so you feed this like a 255 wall barrel. this turns it into like 2300 psi or some crap like that and it feeds all the injectors here this this side's good this side is the side um this is the injector, one of these, I think it might be this one's the injector that I had to replace. I'm going to go ahead and replace the seals on this whole bank and then go ahead and go back in with it. I originally wanted to do a cam on this engine before then, but with everything else going on, building Bernie, all that stuff, because I still want to get holes cut and everything ready for some burnout comps coming up. Uh, just going to go ahead and keep it simple, freshen everything up, all the little things that wasn't quite right on the car, get it just running really good and go from there. I'm just really hoping... But on race week, I run into I don't run into a lifter issue um, on it, so I hope not. If it is, it is. Uh, I might take a set of LS7s just in case. I hope I don't have to pull the heads off of it on race week, but I guess if I had to. Actually, I wonder if I even could do that. Mm, yeah, I should be able to pull the heads off of it um, in the car, so not a huge deal. If I had to, just would suck to go all the way into it that far. Um, but I guess if it, it could happen, so... Um, just open, I mean, 30 some thousand miles, hopefully. I don't lose that DOD lifter crap. I think these are a little better than the Gen 4 stuff, but not much. Um, so once this thing does get a cam, it will get new lifters and all of that as well. So a few moments later, we got these all backed off. These will not pull through, they stay in. Uh, I believe there's a tool that like mounts to here and ends up pulling up, which would be amazing. I actually should probably look at that, but hopefully this is one of the last times I gotta do this with injectors. If you have a Gen 5 LT engine, and the injectors have been in there a while. They get crusted on the tip of the injector. So it makes it a real pain to get this rail out. We actually bowed this one putting it in the first time. Or pulling it out the first time. So it might need a new rail. But I think I can get by with Once it tightens down it goes flat and stuff. It's just installing it. Um, but let's find out and see if it's hard to get this one out this time. Alright so just by pulling by hand we got the rail out. You guys can see it's still a little bent. But as I expected you guys can see the two seals there. Zero seals there. Two seals, two seals, but you guys can see the exhaust right here. So when it loses these seals, it literally just shoots the combustion up through here. See how that one's pretty clean, pretty clean. You can see the combustion up in the head port here and then pretty clean. So um, 
Definitely. That's the one that I had to put my own uh, Teflon seals on, and I didn't have the tool to compress it. Um, these other ones, I think I just left the factory seals on, or I worked them on or something. I don't remember, but uh, either way, I'd have to look back at the video. But that's the one that uh, is a big old pain, and maybe this is the one that stuck real bad on us last time. So there's one that was like oh, crusted in heavy, but yeah. either way, we were able to pull it out. Um, the new kit is right here. So here is the tool. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. Now that this is out, I actually went ahead and bought two seal kits, which I'm, if I'm only pulling one rail out, I only need to replace one. Uh, one, two, six, five, six, nine, three, three. Thanks to Delco, but it comes with actually to replace these clips. Um, both Teflon seals and then the O-ring that's up in top if I were to pull it, but I don't need to. Uh, I just need to replace these and go back in with them. And then here is the tool. I think I found this one on Amazon. Um, CTA 5008 GM Subaru. Good for GM 5362 with Bosch, Continental, Delphi, fuel injectors. Um, so this has the little deal. I'm going to go ahead and pop this open. We'll take a look at it. Here is the tool. It comes with all these little adapters that helps you slide the Teflon seal over the end of this. So they actually like butt up like this right here. And then it helps you slide the seal right onto the injector. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one I need, don't need, whatever. I mean, that one that one fits almost perfect, so it's probably that one. Uh, then it comes with this little plastic deal, and then this metal, which I'm guessing that might be tapered a little bit. And so then you can set it down in there, and it will help um, squeeze it back on to the injector there. Uh, you push it on, once it's on the injector, set it on there, it squeezes these down, and then helps you install it into the engine. Um, so I might try to find some instructions just to make sure I do this right. We'll go ahead and cut these little seals off, little razor blade, pops them off, set new seals on there, set the rail back in, and maybe we'll be good to go. Hopefully I didn't smoke this injector, um, by all the exhaust heat and everything hitting this. That might be a bad injector now, actually. Didn't even think about that. Uh, but I think it was still working when we pulled it. So go ahead and, uh, try this and... Hopefully we can get this thing to work. This thing is kind of expensive. This was actually the cheapest one I found. And it's like 110 or 130 bucks. Not quite sure. Um, but on Amazon you can find it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try to do that real quick. I uh, figured out this tool. I already messed up two of these. But I was trying to spin this compression tool on. And that's where I was kind of screwing up. So you take these little Teflon seals out of here. Good thing I got a second kit. And I'd need another one if I was doing the others. But... Um, Take one of these little Teflon seals. You take what's in this kit's number four. It pops onto the end of the injector. And then you take a Teflon seal. And then we can slide this right here over it. Once it gets onto the second little one, maybe. So now it's onto that first ring. Take that off, take your compression tool, it has a little taper in here, and then you work it on. And I was spinning it, which is how I messed up the last one. So now I just go up and down, side to side, kind of wiggling in it until quite a bit of pressure. And then it pops on, nice tight fit, pop that off, and now your seal is nice and tight on there. Let's go ahead and do one more ring, and then hopefully we'll be good to go. Well, for what it is, they're not ideal, but it did work and get them on there. They're a lot tighter than before, but it did stretch the seal a little bit, as you can see, but it definitely slides down into the compressor a lot easier, so hopefully this will help with installing it, and then uh, hopefully we'll be good to go. If not, pull it back out and try again. When you forget your foot-pounds and your inch-pounds just so happens to go up high enough to where you can get 18 foot-pounds out of it. So 18 foot-pounds here. Go ahead and tighten these down. Get the intake back on. Maybe try to fire this thing up, even though we don't have the rear end in it. Uh, just fire it in park to make sure and see if we uh, we sealed it up. Never looked inside of a Gen 5. The uh, ports are pretty pretty nasty. You get a lot of buildup on the backside of the valves and crap. Uh, but otherwise, Alex came up with a pretty good idea to check to make sure we had fuel pressure in here. Uh, we just unhooked all the coils and went ahead and cranked it over just like it sits uh, to pressurize the system. You can actually smell some fuel in there. So I uh, went ahead and did that. And 
made sure that it turned over, but we want to make sure we took all the spark out of it so we didn't have a fire or anything. So everything is torqued down, intake's good, plugged everything back in. Should be, for the most part, good to go. Um, yeah, so go ahead and hit that. Crank when it starts, but I'd hold your hand here just in case we need to kill it. And uh, go ahead. I might take it a few times still, but... Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.